Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Brownstone. I'm Paulette, and I am your host today for today's Lunch and Learn. This is our Lunch and Learn Hour, and this is an opportunity for you to meet some amazing people that are making a difference in the Brownstone community, both in these internet streets and in these real streets as well. So today we have a wonderful individual that is going to be talking us talking to us today about your kids' money and teaching them some things that they need to know. I'm so super excited to bring to you guys today someone that you definitely need to know for your kids' sake and for yours. Let's talk about Holly Reed. She's the founder of the Master Playbook. Holly Reed Tootle is an award-winning author, speaker, and certified financial education instructor. She's on a mission to motivate, inspire, and help families break the cycle of paycheck to paycheck living and creating a legacy worth leaving. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring up Mrs. Holly Reed Tootle to the Brownstone Studios, and we're going to get this conversation started. How are you? Hello, I am doing well. It is a beautiful day today and the perfect day to talk about your kids and money because oh it is National Financial Literacy Month. It is. And that is why we are here today because kids and money can be quite a thing. Now, when we were talking previously, I was telling you about my two youngest. I have one that's in college and how she stay in my purse. And then the <laughs> other one who is a pity pincher, he's a miser and he's making money on his own um, and how we're teaching him some of the things that are necessary in terms of, of etiquette and those kinds of things when it comes to spending his money. Mm -hmm. um, and so the first thing that I want to ask, because of course, you know, inquiring minds want to know, how in the world did you end up in this realm of wanting to teach kids about money? What kicked that off? Yes. Let me tell you, it was really my own personal experiences uh, with money and really mm -hmm. my own uh, financial missteps. Right. So mm -hmm. growing up, my parents did what most parents do. They taught me everything that they knew about how to be successful uh, with money. They set expectations for me and my sisters. And so literally by the time I was 23, I had met their expectations. Mm -hmm. I had gone to college. I got a good job. Yeah. You know, I had bought a house because that was something my dad really instilled in me and my sisters. And then um, I was working in the real world and I got laid off. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it rocked my world. Like it shook me up. So even though all my dad gave us great money advice. Yeah. I wasn't following it. I wasn't, mm. doing, <laughs> mm. Mm. I wasn't doing any of the things. Um, right. But what I was doing is I was doing everything our America teaches us to do, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our America teaches us to live above our means. Mm. Our America teaches us not to think about our future selves, but instead to live in the moment and, yeah. and enjoy all the luxuries and conveniences mm. of life, mm. right? Mm. So I was doing all of those things. Yeah. And so when I was laid off, I was hurt. I was caught up in my feelings. Um, but I also, it was a wake up call because yeah. you know what I said? I said, never again. Y'all right. won't catch me slipping. Right. And um, thankfully, because of that specific incident, I started reading everything I could, learning all I could, following the gurus at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I managed to claw my way out of over thirty thousand dollars in debt. Wow. Get back up on my feet. And I just started thinking about the solution. So like once I clawed my way out of debt, I started preaching the debt free gospel. Come I on. wanted everyone I knew. I wanted everyone I didn't know to yep. understand what it felt like to really experience what it felt like on the other side of credit card debt, mm -hmm. what it felt like on the other side of auto loans mm. and student loans. Yes. And um, what I realized in that journey, in those conversations, one, it was too common, way too common. It's too many of us making the same mistakes over and over yeah. again. Why? Yeah. Because no one had ever taught us differently. Yeah. No one had ever showed us otherwise. Yeah. And a lot of us were learning our money habits through trial and error. Mm -hmm. Like this from, you know, 
I did this one time. Did it work? Okay, I'm good. Right. Okay, I got a, or I got away with it this time. Yeah. Maybe I can get away with it another time. And so um, I just start thinking to myself, what if we start talking to our kids earlier? What if we yes. start planting these seeds earlier? And that's what did it. So I, I kicked off and wrote a book about a couple of years ago. It's mm -hmm. called Teach Your Child a Fish. Yeah. Five Money Habits, Every Child Should Master. Mm -hmm. And the book was so well received that I knew I was on to something. Right. Okay. Um, parents were in the amen corner. They were like, you know what? I wish someone had uh, laid this out for me. When yeah. I was older. And that's how the book was written. I mm -hmm. wish. Someone had taught me these things, these fundamentals mm -hmm. that the school unfortunately didn't teach me. Yeah. We weren't having those detailed conversations at home. So mm -hmm. I think I mentioned my dad, you know, he gave me and my sister lots of money advice, but the missing piece was we didn't have the money to practice. Mm. <laughs> Right. That part. Yeah. Practice in. Mm -hmm. So of mm -hmm. course, once we're out on our own dealing with more money than we've ever had in our lives, mm -hmm. we are fumbling the bag. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's yeah. how I got involved in all of this. Wow. And, you know, it's so interesting that you said all that you did, because I, I can I can attest to that as a young adult. I went through the same thing. Um, I can recall my parents sitting at the dining room table first thing in the morning pouring over the bills, what was going to be paid, what needed to wait, what was this or what was that. I knew that um, they were running a business and it wasn't doing as well as they would have liked for it to be. Um, and so they were constantly robbing Peter to pay Paul. And as African-Americans during those time frames, one of the things that we weren't familiar with was OPM, other people's money. That's and right. so, you know, they were they were literally you know, taking money that was coming in and it was paying this bill and that bill. They didn't know to separate bank accounts and things like that. And so um, I'm grateful for the foundation, but that's as far as I remember. And then I went away to college and baby, the tables that laid before me in the student union, inviting me, you know, to get a Discover card, an American Express card, a Visa, a J. Listen. All the things. Yeah. All the things. All the things. And they know we didn't have no money. I mean, yeah. it was the same with me. Um, and if you think about it, they were asking us, we, we were basically giving them our future earnings for what? Mm. For a water bottle, for a, a t-shirt, for, for a, a pizza party, whatever yes. the little trinkets and incentives were mm. back in the day. And thank goodness thank goodness the laws have changed yeah so they can't just roll up on the campus and and uh you know pray on our young people but that doesn't stop our society from still pushing that consumer mm -hmm. culture to our young people right it right. doesn't stop it if you look at these gaming apps that our kids that our young people are playing it's it's constantly um targeting them like yeah. with ads or mm -hmm. You know, pay X amount and get more coins so you can go to the next level. Um, so it's in the gaming apps. It's in the whole gift card culture. Yes, it is. Right? It's teaching. These gift cards are just credit cards with training wheels, teaching our kids how to how to uh, keep track of the money, right, on the right. card. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's all a game. And it's all preparing them just for more of the consumer culture. Uh, buy, buy, buy instead of save, grow, invest, right? Right. I love yeah. that. Wait a minute. I, I need you to, could you, you said save, grow, and invest. Mm -hmm. Hold on just a minute. Let me, <laughs> hold on. Because Holly said save, <laughs> grow, grow, invest. Invest. Now, is that something that you teach folks when you're when they go through your class or the children or the young folks? How does that how does that work? Yeah. So one of the things I have the privilege of doing in this space is I host money camps for kids mm -hmm. and for teenagers. So mm -hmm. I start as young as 10 year olds. So the kids camp is from 10 to 14. Mm -hmm. And then the teens camp is 14 and up. Right. Okay. And so in these camps, I am teaching them the foundational um, building blocks of mastering money. 
Mm -hmm. I want them to practice healthy money habits. We're not in there talking just vocabulary, right? Mm -hmm. They're learning the language of money, but I'm actually giving them practical experiences okay. through scenarios, through mm -hmm. action items, through activities, mm -hmm. fun and engaging mm -hmm. so that they can start practicing these money habits. And so um, as a product of a middle income family, right? Yeah. Even though it was four of us, the money that my parents made, we didn't have a whole lot of discretionary income. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do specifically for the teens um, is I have included a learn and earn incentive. So mm. you do the work, you earn real money so mm. that you can start practicing these money habits that we are talking about. Okay. Um, and so again, I get that because that was the piece that was missing for me. My dad okay. gave us great advice, but we didn't have the money. He didn't have the money to give us an allowance every week mm -hmm. or, um, you know, to pay us for doing things around the house. No, that was that those discretionary funds were pretty much already set and established. Right. On right. how they were going to be spent. OK, um, so I just want to give people an opportunity to not only learn the information, but like I said, give them that experience and exposure that's really going to make it sink in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really make it click for them. I love that. I love that. And so they're going to get hands on experience of learning and earning. Now, I got a question. How are they going to earn it? Yes. Yeah, so they earn it uh, because we meet once a week um, for one hour where I'm giving them the instruction. We're talking about the money habit for the week. And then I give them um, self-paced activities that they can complete on their own. It's not going to take more than two hours if they mm -hmm. jump in. Mm -hmm. And um, those once they complete those items, submit them before the due date. Right. So it's holding them accountable, yeah. uh, making them show proof that gotcha. they are doing the work. Okay. And then it's as easy as that. You do the work, you submit mm -hmm. it on time, you get the prize, you get the money. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. How cute. Listen, so you say that and, and you would be surprised at how many teens drop the ball. And then really? they're like, oh, but Miss Holly, but Miss Holly. And I was like, but you didn't read the instructions. You read the instructions. Yeah. You complete it. You didn't turn it yeah. in on time. Uh -huh. Better luck next week. Wow. <laughs> so they, so here's they, a question they learn a lesson real quick. quick. Wow. And they're learning, first of all, pay your bills on time. <laughs> Because that's what I'm hearing you say. So I, I'm so curious busy. about this part. Yeah. How in the world do you get the students, the children, the, the, the teenagers who already have the attention span of, of what's the next thing that's happening on TikTok and so forth? And they're like this all of the time. How do you get them to stay engaged? Yes. Yeah, so I use that technique. That technology, the very yeah. technology that they are so engrossed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we use video like they turn in their assignments uh, through video assignments Got or, um, you know, I have them go and look something up and take a snapshot, take a screenshot of it mm -hmm. and send it to me so that I know is complete. So okay. we use that technology. But then um, I break the things down. So I know all kids don't learn the same. So one of the great things about our money camp is we uh, do varied instructional things. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe your child learns best by reading something and then completing. Maybe they watch a video. So we incorporate different elements, mm -hmm. um, music and uh, and like I said, video and just to drive home the point. But like mm -hmm. you said, also to keep them engaged. And right. then there's a lot of back and forth. So uh -huh. I want to hear it from them. I need to know that they are getting it, that they're mm -hmm. just not going and looking something up off of the Internet and right. it down. But what are your how does it personally relate to you yeah. and your where you are in life mm -hmm. and in these teen uh, in these teenage years? Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the teens have have really uh, who've gone through the camp have really enjoyed it. Uh, you can go to my site and hear testimonials for, directly okay. from them. So um, it's it's been a great experience and I love working with them. OK, and so let's just take a quick break right here. I want to definitely let you guys know that Holly does have an event that's coming up and it's called the Future Millionaire Money Camp for Teens. She's going to be talking about goal setting and earning money, saving and investing, spending and how credit works 
And of course, the big one, giving. Y'all, listen, let me tell you something. I just want you guys to know that this is an amazing opportunity for you all to get in and um, learn how to help your teens get what they need so they're not bumping their heads the way that most of us in my age group did. So you're going to head over to bit.ly forward slash teen money camp. That's bit.ly forward slash teen money camp. And you're going to go ahead and register your young one for this class. And listen, don't let those kids tell you what they ain't going to do. That part. <laughs> they going. Let me stop. All right. So... <laughs> So let's start with the four components of your of your course, um, Holly. So the very first one, that first component, which one is that and how what what will that encompass for students? Yep, we kick off the week on goal setting and ways that they can earn money at their age, right? The goal is I want them out of your pocket. I give them a challenge um, to start earning money during the camp and then I show them all the ways that they are able to do one, all they need to do is pick something and mm -hmm. start pursuing it, like okay. land, putting it into action. And um, so it's very important for our kids, whether they are teenagers or not, whether they're the young ones or the old mm -hmm. ones, that mm -hmm. we make a correlation early on with them between um, working mm -hmm. and being rewarded, right? Yeah. You don't work, you don't get paid. You don't do the schoolwork, you don't get the grades. You don't practice, you don't see the performance results on the field, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to start making that correlation early because that's a key uh that's a key concept when it comes to money and right. building wealth, right? You got to put in the work in order to receive the reward. And so that first week is all about goal setting. We dive into their dreams, thinking about their future mm -hmm. self. Why would yes. they want to become a future millionaire? Right. Me showing them examples of young people who are on a path uh, to doing just that because they are pursuing things that they mm -hmm. love or that they're really skilled in or that they're really just interested in. Um, so that seems that sets the foundation, right? Right. Um, week two, we dive into saving and investing. Uh, this is critical because we know that saving um, requires what? Patience. It requires self-discipline. And when we live and operate in a society where they can literally uh, press a button on the phone yeah. and a package arrives in 20 minutes, you know, the food arrives in 20 minutes or the package arrives the next day, yeah. it's really difficult for them to, to um, experience delayed right. gratification. But I know, and you know, that's a key element to saving money, right? And so saving money has never uh, made anyone a millionaire, but investing does. And so saving is just the foundation to investing. So mm -hmm. once they've built that saving muscle, they are going to be great investors. Mm -hmm. So we dive into the stock market. We talk mm -hmm. about the NASDAQ. We talk mm -hmm. about the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. And I encourage them to purchase their very first stock. I show them how to pick the stock, the platforms that they um, can buy the stock with the help of their parents. And um, this has really been a highlight because most parents don't even understand investing, how to get started. Um, and so occasionally I'll even see a parent like in the room listening in the background. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I bet. You, you yeah. own lesson, right? So um, so it's been it's been wonderful. But we need to tar start talking to our kids about investing, telling them how to do it without following all of the crazy trends, because those things are going to come and go, and go. You know, or they're going to carry a lot of risk. And what I'm thinking about specifically is like when all the teens were into NFTs and Bitcoin. And I think it's great to be on the yeah. cutting edge. But do you even understand the basics right. and how it works mm -hmm. and where success has been seen you know, for centuries from right. the whole strategy of buying and holding, right? Yeah. Um, and picking good companies, picking right. good solid companies. Mm -hmm. So um, the third week, we dive into spending wisely and uh, how credit works. So a lot of us, uh, of course, we talk about budgeting. We got to talk about budgeting. Absolutely. I know yep. people don't like the budget, but they need to know. They need cool. to know how to cool. do it and mm -hmm. to start practicing it, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then with credit, 
because our kids are, are exposed to it at such a young age and um, and because we are literally moving towards a cashless society. We yes. don't see coins and dollars being exchanged. No. It's happening. We dipping. We swiping. You don't mm -hmm. even see the money. So the psychology of giving up something physical, something tangible yeah. is lost on this generation. Yeah. Right? They, wow. don't, they don't feel the same pain of giving up $20 that we did when it was actually cash money. Oh, my and goodness. So, so it's so important that in these digital environments, we talk to them about how credit works, mm -hmm. knowing the difference between debit and credit cards, um, understanding, you know, credit scores so that they know the button, the levers, the things that are so important um, and really the basics of just, you know, honoring your obligations, honoring your commitments, not taking right. on more than you can chew. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we wrap it up with giving. And so I, this is one of my most favorite money habits because obviously we want to raise money savvy kids. We want, to, we want them to be money Absolutely. smart, make great decisions. But we also want to raise future millionaires that have a heart, that are empathetic, yeah. that, are, um, that their awareness is raised around their community and how mm -hmm. they contribute to making that community um, better Mm -hmm. when they give of their time, their talent yeah. and um, their resources. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so just talking to them about that, you know, actively practicing um, mm -hmm. the giving habit during the camp. And it's really been um, really been influential. I've had parents reach out to me weeks later mm -hmm. or months later to say, mm -hmm. hey, because of your camp, my son or my daughter uh, now is participating in this activity at school where yeah. they're given to the ch local children's hospital or given oh, to nice. a, lo a local um, foster community, housing community. Mm -hmm. And she was like, and I know they wouldn't have done it before if you hadn't introduced them to some of these concepts. I love that. So um, mm -hmm. we have seen the results. It is absolutely uh, transformational. Um, I've heard parents like, oh, you know, I, this this is the stuff I'm talking to them about. But, you know, when they went through your camp, it's clicking for them. Right. So sometimes our kids just need to hear from somebody from else. Somebody else. There you go. Right. I was getting ready to say that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, as parents, we we are responsible for teaching our kids so much. Yes. We talk to them about sex. We talk to them oh, about the no. social injustices in the world. We yes. talk to them about, you know, washing the dishes, doing oh. the things. Right. So. Some of these things, because we're giving them so much, it it, becomes it, noise. it'll come in and it might. <laughs> oh, not the other way. <laughs> right. like, yeah, yeah, mama just talking again. Yeah, exactly. Right. So sometimes we just need to give them that experience and exposure beyond our bubbles right. so that they can hear it from somebody else, see it differently. And then the light bulbs start to go off. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. This sounds like this is amazing. So I did not know that it's a four week long class. So you are really in depth with yeah. it. And then the students walk away with homework and they walk away with ideas and concepts of how money works. So I got a question. Yes. Where the grown folk class at? I, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need a refresher course. Listen. <laughs> Listen, I, I have a YouTube channel where I talk to the parents about what they should be teaching their kids. Okay. Um, I, the only thing I have for adults, again, is all around, you know, how to set your kids up, how to give your kids the financial head start that they deserve. Yeah. What are the things you could be doing independently um, to plant a nest egg for your kids? Mm -hmm. I talk to parents about, you know, getting out of debt, because what I found is um when we as parents hold a lot of debt, it prevents us from doing the other thing, giving our kids a nest egg, giving them mm, a financial head on. start, right? And so um, those are really the, the the programs that I have for parents, but I'm yeah. here for these babies. That's I'm here right. for your kids. Yes. Uh, it's all about building a legacy, changing uh -huh. and shifting the financial trajectory because I know a lot of us didn't get it. 
Um, right. And if we got any of it, it was inconsistent. It was through mm-hmm. our grandmother's story. It was through mm-hmm. watching how our mom and dad paid Peter, you know, Rob Peter to pay Rob Paul. Peter to pay Paul. No. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot of lessons from observation, from storytelling. Yes. But what do what are the things mm-hmm. we need to go back and make sure that they absolutely have a solid foundation yeah. in? And so right. that's why I'm here. That's why the Master Playbook exists to do that very thing. I love it. Y'all, Holly Rod, why did I just call you Holly Rod? Why you, <laughs> Holly Reed Tootle. Listen, girl, first of all, let's just talk about the fact that this is information that our community needs because you know Brownstone Worldwide, what we do is we love to change the narrative of how we are telling our stories our way. And the, and the thing that I most definitely remember, and I don't know if this happened to you, and I, and I heard you talk about what your parents, your dad taught you in terms of money and all of the other things. We It was almost as if talking about money was taboo. Mm-hmm. In, in a lot of communities, uh, the community that I grew up in, you don't talk about it because we didn't have it. Right. You know I mean, like, right. don't even ask because you we don't have it. Yeah, we ain't got it. Or, uh, you, you girl, we got to wait to the first. I heard that a lot. We got to wait to the first, not the first, the first. <laughs> um, and then it was, you know, I get my stamps on the first and the 15th. And like I said, my parents had a business, so we weren't in that, but we heard it a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, um, all of my friends, you know, they got free lunch or they got, mm-hmm. you know, some kind mm-hmm. of and so it was just something. It was almost as if it was taboo. It was like, if you talk about money in any capacity, it was as if the, the earth was going to open up and, and swallow you up because you talked about something that was so taboo. Yeah. Now, here's a question. And so this this really so when we're talking about money and you're teaching the children in these classes, do you believe that they understand from the beginning that money is not taboo? Like maybe I did when I was a girl coming up. Is that or do you do you take it where it's not so scary that I think that's a better word or phrase to say? Yeah, I don't think the kids are um, hesitant to talk about it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the kids, well, I get I get a different I get a variety, right? I get some kids who whose parents have talked to them a little bit. I get some kids whose parents haven't covered anything. And so that's why they're they're like, yeah. I don't even know where to start. So yeah, yeah. like have mm-hmm. at it, give them give them something. But they don't seem to be afraid of it. What I do know is that a lot of the kids that come through our camp, they do have these limitations on their goals. So when we first start talking about goals, they their goals are so small. Wow. Like, you know, the goals are so, um, you know, I'm just going to get a job and an apartment. Mm. And yeah. I, you know, I just want to finish school. They're very short sighted. And, and I push them. I'm like, dream bigger. Mm. Give me something. Give me something bigger. I need something bigger than that. And mm. really push them. Um, to, you know, by the end, they're like, oh, yeah. I want to be the engineer in an electric city. Come on. I want to do, I'm like, yes, this is That's what I'm talking right. about. Yes. Like, out of the box, what are some of the things you you see that, that you know are coming with mm-hmm. AI, with all this technology, mm-hmm. with all the STEM activities mm-hmm. y'all are doing in school? Like, come yeah. on, bring it. What, right, bring it. Something. That's right. Yes. You don't want to just get a job. What kind of job? What's the profession? Or you want to be a doctor? Okay, let's talk about that. You want to be a plastic surgeon? What you want to be? I don't care if you're into celebrity status. That's fine. Let's do it in that arena. Uh, So you you really just pushing them. So um, so I don't think it's a taboo Mm -hmm. topic. I think they just have not thought about what it would be like to really be a millionaire. Like really have at your fingertips Mm -hmm. where you can make some different choices for your life than what you see, not what you see. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh, this is so good. Y'all, I know it's almost time for us to wrap up, but let me tell you something. I definitely want you guys to go ahead and check out Holly Reed. Y'all, she's a CPA. She is the CEO and financial educator of the Master Playbook. And her upcoming class is the Future Millionaire Money Camp for Teens. Um, And listen, when is it? Let's talk about that. Yes. So we are offering two cohorts this round, right? So we're going to um, offer a Monday cohort 
that starts on April 24th. So right around the corner, right? Okay. It's going to start on Monday. It's going to be every Monday for four Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. And then we are also offering a Sunday cohort. So say your kids are busy during the week. You don't want them doing conflicting with schoolwork. We yep. offer it on Sundays starting April 30th. And again, it's going to be for four consecutive Sundays at okay. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. Right. OK, so we're talking Mondays, April 24th. You can start and that's four consecutive Mondays or you can start on Sunday, April 30th. That's four consecutive Sundays. And um, that's pretty cool. And listen, let me go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put that on the screen so our folks will know exactly where to go. Mondays, April 24th, you can begin taking that four week course or Sunday, April 30th, you can begin taking that course or your young one can start taking that course. And again, I'm going to go ahead and put up the information on where you need to go, y'all, so that y'all can get these coins um, and learn how to keep them bit.ly teen money camp bit.ly forward slash teen money camp is where you are going to go and get all of the things that your kid needs in order to be ready to take on the world from a financial aspect and that's so important because there are folks out there that are still predatory there are folks out there that will give you a car that don't work listen i said don't work i didn't say doesn't right um, and I think that this, you know, getting this even before the kids hit college and, and getting it now, so yes. it's not lost in the sauce is so super important. Listen, and if your kids are in high school, we are running out of time, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel this great sense of urgency because once they are 18, once they are out on their own, whether that's them living on a college campus, whether that's them going on to going into military, mm -hmm. they are they are their eyes are going to be wide open, right? right? And right. this newfound independence. Yeah. But we need to start setting the expectations, giving them some guidelines, mm -hmm. so they don't fall off track, right? Right. Or right. if they fall off, we can help them quickly get back on exactly. because of the things that they are going to learn in this mm -hmm. money camp. And um, I just get so passionate about it because, unfortunately, our traditional school systems, they just don't do enough. No, they don't, they don't right. teach financial education at all um, consistently. Right. Mm -hmm. They might they might get a little bit of social studies, but it's talking about the economics. It's not talking about the day to day. How do I manage my right. money? How right. do I allocate my the money that I earned? What do I need to be doing with yeah. even my little bit? in order to um, grow and really set right. myself up for my mm -hmm. 20s, my 30s, my mm -hmm. 40s. Like mm -hmm. the money habits that they build now will benefit them for a lifetime. Absolutely. It will benefit them for a lifetime. Alternatively, what yeah. they don't know could cripple them for a lifetime. Come on. Right? So it's so important. Um and I just, I welcome, consider this your invitation. Come on. <laughs> to to join me on this journey to close yeah. the financial education gap yeah. um, and to really set, set our kids up for success. I love this. I love this. So listen, y'all heard it first. Holly Reed is here to teach us how to get our children ready to close that financial gap in our communities and beyond, because all it does is it just helps us better. And, and, and it helps to prepare them to prepare their children for a better and greater future. So what I want you guys to do is to, again, head over to bit.ly forward slash teen money camp. Uh, Holly, any last words that you want to leave for the folks before we wrap up? Yes, I want to say this. Um, I say this all the time. It is difficult to master um, what you've never been taught. Right. And so we can't expect a one-time lecture for our kids to master all the things. Yeah. We have got to invest in our kids. We have got to give them that experience and exposure. Mm -hmm. We've got to expose them to things that are going to make these money lessons stick. Yeah. And again, I just invite you guys uh, to join me. Take a look. If you right. have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer any questions. And more importantly, I just want to thank Brownstone. Thank you guys <laughs> for this 
yes, platform. Thank you for, you know, the opportunity for me to even share because I'm out here. I'm the best kept secret and I'm tired of being Damn. a secret. <laughs> so we, go, we we putting on the bullhorn and, and we're doing all the things. That's what we need to do. We want to make sure that everybody knows that's a part of our community and beyond who you are and what you're offering. And I know that hopefully this won't be the last time that you're holding this class. So definitely let us know when you're holding it again. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, you guys, this has been amazing. Once again, we want to thank Holly Reed for coming in and hanging out with us today and talking about the teen money camp that is coming up. Registration actually closes on this Friday. So if you want to get in, you might as well go ahead and do it now. How about that? All right. So if there's nothing else from our side of the, the, the studio, folks, we're good. OK, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it up. I want to thank you guys for coming to hang out with us once again for another Lunch and Learn Hour. We are here on KCPR Radio, the Brownstone. Go ahead and download the app and also get ready for more from Brownstone Worldwide. I appreciate you, Holly, for coming to hang out with us. And you guys, we thank you, too. Have a great day.